Hey guys, Andrew King here. Just wanted to talk to you a little about my meat prep. I've had like two people ask me what I'm doing for meat prep, so I'm not going to act like I've had a bunch of questions. I'm just doing some cool stuff with my meat prep. So far, I'd talk to you all about it. I'm running the cube method for my bench and deadlift, and then also my overhead press. If you do some reading or know anything about Ed Cohen, you know that he used to train his overhead press like it was a main movement. And uh, that's something I started doing just during meat prep. I don't do it during off season. I start 10 weeks out training my overhead press like a main movement. And uh, that's been something I've been doing since the meet where I benched 500 for the first time. So about, about two years ago. And um, this is something I feel has worked really well for me. So I took the cube method, the uh, the sets, reps, and percentages for the bench press part of the cube and applied it to my overhead press, and I do it on the same day as my bench. And uh, the cube kingpin is the version of the cube that I'm running, which is one of the older versions of the cube. I think it's the second cube that Brandon made. Um, it's by far my favorite version of the cube method. But if you look at it, the way the made movements and then accessories are set up. So on bench day, for example, you might do like three sets of eight with 80% or something like that. I know that's not right. but And then for your close grip bench and then one inch pause off your chest or spoto press, whichever you want to call it, um, the weight would actually be above the weight that you use for your main movement. So if you were using like 380 pounds for your normal competition grip bench, your close grip bench might be like 415 and your spoto press might be like 420 or something like that. It goes up in the accessories rather than down. And um, the first time I ran it, I figured out that I didn't really like that. It didn't really work the best for me. I know people that it has worked well for, but it didn't really work the best for me. So what I do is I maxed out on my close grip bench and then a couple other of my accessory exercises and I run the percentages, sets, and reps for the main set, also for my accessory exercises. So not only did I program the cube for bench press and deadlift, but I also programmed it for close grip bench press, deficit deadlift, uh, good mornings, some of my other accessory exercises. And then um, as far as squats go, I alternate between going heavy and light. Um, kind of like the Lily Bridge method, but a little bit different because uh, I just go on my squat, on my heavy squat days. You'll see on the pictures I show you here in a minute. Um, I never really know what I'm going to squat. I don't go in the gym with a plan. All, it, all it'll say is squat heavy. So whether I'm working up to a heavy triple, double, single, I'll just go off field that day, push it as hard as I can. I, I never really have a plan. And then every other heavy day, I try and one-up myself somehow, whether it's an extra rep with the same weight or more weight for the same rep or something like that. Um, I found like the rep calculators, which is like, the weight you do times 0 0.0333 times the reps you do plus the weight you do. And it, it'll give you one rep max. And that was in the original cube method book. Um, I found that, that my squat follows it almost exactly. Um, it puts me way over on my deadlift. If you know anything about my deadlift, you know I'm a horrible, just shitty deadlifter. And uh, so the reps always put me at, at like a one rep max of... 740 or something on my deadlift and you know I can't come anywhere close to that so I know it always puts me way over on my deadlift it always puts me way under on my bench it always puts me benching at like 515 520 and then uh, my squats though my squats almost follow it exactly so I know that I can't use a rep calculator for my bench or deadlift but I can use one for my squat so that's why I do my squat day the way I do because I can always get a really good idea within a couple pounds of what I can do so, um, 
I'm doing the January 16th meet in Ashland with Josh Morris, Mark Miller, JP Carroll, Daniel Bell, um, everybody, everybody that I named there, and, and Brandon's doing it also. Um, we all have 2,100 plus raw totals, and everybody's going to be going for a 2,200 plus raw total. So it's going to be a big meet, and it's going to be a fun meet. I'm really excited for that. Um, me and Mark talk a lot of shit to each other, but I love Mark, and I hope he does well. But if he beats me, I'm going to get his name tattooed on my ass. That's a bet I've made with him. So that should be interesting. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you some example pictures, just to kind of how I have everything set up. I realize that none of y'all really give a shit, because, I, like I said, I've had, like, two people ask me. Uh, I'm the one doing it, and I really don't give a shit, so I'm not going to act important or anything, but I just wanted to kind of make this video for fun because I was bored, and uh, my Black Ops 3 is downloading on my Xbox, and I really don't have anything else to do. So, see ya. All right, so here you can see the uh, squat, bench, and deadlift part of my meat prep. You can pause it and just kind of read over it. I think it's just showing like two weeks at a time here. But uh, you get the idea. Just ask any questions you might have, and uh, that's about all I got. See y'all.